Yeah, just give me a thumbs up. I'm ready to go. Okay. So what so is, it's, what it's a tremendous honor to go into the uh, National Football Foundation Hall of Fame, College Football Hall of Fame. Um, there's people that I've known who I respected and that I grew up underneath that had that same experience, but it's a unique experience. I, I forget what the percentage is, but there's, it's a very low, low percentage of uh, coaches that have had the good fortune to be selected to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you started to talk about your, your coach, Jack Mollenkopf, playing at Purdue. Um, talk about what that means to join Jack in the Hall. Yeah, uh, okay. Jack Mollenkopf was my college coach. I was not the best player on a very, very good football team. Jack treated me exceptionally well, and he asked me to come in, and I started coaching almost. We came back from the Rose Bowl, and I, they stuck me in a car, and I went to uh, Chicago to pick up the highlight film. So from the day I ended up playing, uh, I started coaching, and Jack was just a tremendous individual um, at that height of football where you played for the national championship at least once. Um, he, he treated us with such respect that I like to think that I car carried that on in his tradition through the 45 years that I coached. So talk about, you, you started, you got your, you, obviously you were at the, your assistant coaching jobs at Lehigh and stuff like that, but talk about when you came to Washington and Jefferson, what it meant to you to transform that program. Well, one of the things I'd learned in the other places I'd been <coughs> is that uh, they were all rebuilding places. Washington and Jefferson had a tremendous background. They played in the 1922 Rose Bowl, okay? Um, I'm joining John Heisman, uh, uh, Pete Henry, and some great names in college football. So I knew because of the location and because of the situation and the people who had preceded me years before that it was a place that you could revitalize. And fortunately, I got good coaches. I had a great administration. And then we had tremendous players. And uh, uh, we turned it around and became a national power and had a lot of fun doing it. And you did it twice. You did it at Cal U, too, the Vulcans. Talk, talk about how you landed there and, and, and what it meant to you to do that twice. Well, Cal U was a little bit different experience because it, it was a state university, <clears throat> different guidelines, uh, different circumstances, but I had a great president again. And one of the things you learn, I think, in most organizations is that your success is predicated on having somebody at the top who believes in the, the mission that you have. And we took Cal, who had not had a winning season for 15 years, and the last five years, we won at least 10 games. We won the Lambert Trophy, which is the best team in the East, in 07, 08, and 09. Um, one of the really interesting things is uh, um, uh, we, had, we put 21 kids from that program into the NFL. And at the end of the month, when we go to Atlanta to the Hall of Fame, uh, my last uh, player, Eric Harris, is a safety for for the Atlantic Falcons, and so we're going to get together. Um, so here it is, 11 years after I've retired, somebody that I didn't screw up is still playing pretty well. So you have a lot of stories like that. I mean, why did you get into coaching, and, and was it everything you ever thought it would be? Um, I got into coaching primarily. We had an incident in my junior year at Purdue. We lost an extremely difficult game to Michigan State, 14 to 10. Bad official call. Um, Michigan State went on and won the national championship. Well, the student newspaper riled, got riled up and said they ought to fire the coaching staff. And those of us on the squ squad said, geez, that's, you know, so we, we formulated a lot of en enthusiasm and uh, counteracted to what the newspaper was doing. Um, when I did that, the relationships with all those coaches and knowing what that meant to them kind of said, geez, this may be what I want to do. Um, I had been in, um, I was a pre-engineer and then 
you know, I, I was in business as well uh, as a, as a great ac academic, and I shifted over to concentrating in coaching. So, um, how did you find out? I mean, that you were going into the college football hall of fame. I mean, that's <laughs> pretty exciting news. It's a really interesting story. Um, uh, my wife, who I love and who is the best football coach's wife in America, um, we buy a lot of things from Amazon, okay? So I took our dog out in the evening and brought him back in, and there was a package sitting right by the door. And I'm saying, okay, my wife got another package. So I picked the package up, I brought it in, looked at it and said, me, it was for me. So when I opened it, it had the football. It said, and, and understand that one of my best friends, who was a great player at Purdue, and actually introduced me to my wife, is a character. I thought he was fooling around, and he sent me this football just to, 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 to kind of joke with me. Well, then I started reading it, and then I read underneath was the, the script that went with it, congratulations, and so forth. So at least for 15 minutes, I thought I was being punked by uh, my good friend. And then I was obviously very ecstatic when I found out the truth. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, the, uh, you know, you've had some great accolades. I mean, I, you know, after coach of the year, um, appearances in the Stag Bowl and playoffs. Are there moments that stick out in your mind? Yeah, uh, well, two things. Um, what I consider the turnaround game. Uh, we went four and five my first year at WJ, three, five, and one my second year. Um, the third year, I, be, I, fo I focused a great deal more in. Well, we played the defending champs who had won forever, and uh, our squad rose up. We won the game 36 to eight, and I think the, the guy, his name's Chuck Clousing, I believe he's in the hall. And uh, it was Chuck's worst, worst loss, and I'd known Chuck since 1956 when I was a young kid. So that was our turnaround game, because from that point on, our kids believed we could beat anybody. And that year we ended up going to the semifinals of the national championship, to Central Iowa beat us out there. But it was, uh, that game was the turnaround game for, I guess, my career as well as WNJ. And we had somewhat the same situation at Cal, IUP, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, which you've seen that game, uh, had been the dominant. And, and again, Frank Signetti is in the hall. And Frank, I'd known for a long time. Um, and when, when we beat them, it's the first time in 20 years Cal had beaten IUP. And it, it wasn't close. We beat them 35-21, and it wasn't that close. Those, those games were what I call uh, the games that turn programs around when you're beating the best people in your league. And it's the start of our kids in both situations believing that we could uh, compete with anybody. Western Pennsylvania, I mean, you bring up a great point. Um, Coach Klausing, Coach Signetti, uh, a lot of great names, and Western Pennsylvania is some of the best football in the, in the country. I mean, what does it mean to you to be kind of connected to that and part of that rich tradition? Well, I'm very proud of it. Um, uh, again, I, I'm a Western Pennsylvania kid. I chose Purdue. Uh, we had a lot of guys from Western PA go to, to Purdue back in those days. And my, but to, to be recognized at, as a member of the hall and realize the impact that, that has on Western Pennsylvania football. Uh, th that football goes all the way back into the, the 1800s. And, uh, uh, you know, there's a Mike Ditka, uh, there's a, uh, a Tony Dorsett, uh, there's, uh, uh, you, name, you name it, uh, some of the greatest names that ever played. Well, I wasn't a great player. High school, I was okay. But in college, I learned how to be a good coach. And one of the great things I learned from Coach Molenkoff 
was get go good players and then don't screw them up. <laughs> what, what, what's your, 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 what your phrase? Is good, good, good players can overcome bad coaching. What That's what I said. Uh, you know, great players can overcome bad coaching. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add? I mean, about you know, just being here now and today and some of the people you're going to be around. And again, going into the Hall of Fame, I stepped on you a little bit there. Well, no, it's, uh, I, I saw R.C. Slocum when I, when I came in. And R.C. and I and Barry Switzer and uh, uh, Don Neeland, uh, Grant Taft, were all on a board together to help uh, children, uh, save children, uh, protect children, and so forth. So when you fig when I look at that group and realize that I now carry some of the same credentials as they do, uh, makes me very proud. Uh, my family, my wife, as I said earlier, uh, there couldn't be a better football coach's wife anywhere in the country. And uh, uh, she, she sat in rain and snow and very rarely uh, told me how bad I, what mistakes I may have made. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a thrill for our whole family. My brothers are here, my daughter's here with her husband. Uh, my close friends are here. Um, it's a tremendous honor and one that uh, I'll cherish as long as I live. Well, it's been a great opportunity for me to have uh, an impact, my coaching staff and I, to have an impact on thousands of young men. Uh, and I can't tell you the number of uh, uh, texts and messages I, uh, I've received from all those guys, doctors, lawyers, uh, uh, law, you know, uh, p police officers, um, business executive, um, you know, the fact that uh, what I learned from Jack Mollenkoff was to establish standards and to re require hard work and dedication and to pass that on to, to young men so that they carry that forward in their lives. It's a generational thing. Um, I spoke at um, the uh, I, I, I gave eulogy for my position coach at Purdue, who was a close friend, and I said that is that I'm happy. This was in 1997. I am happy that I'm able to take what Al Hager taught me and carry it forward, so that that another generation will get that information. And that's what football really. I'm not saying there aren't other sports that do that or other activities. I'm just saying the fact that you get guys from a variety of different backgrounds and put them together and they become a team and they become a unified group to accomplish something. Uh, when you're asking kids to get up at five o'clock in the morning in the snow, walk down to the gym, work out for an hour, go back, shower, and then go to class. It requires a dedication and discipline to do that. That doesn't stop when you stop playing. That carries on in your life uh, and how you treat your family and how you treat your neighbors and also whatever your profession ends up being. To me, that's what, what all we've learned and what we've done is to create that atmosphere for young men. I uh, probably, uh, I'm hoping I'm in the back row. So <laughs> as I told you, I got the Bob Euchre seats. So uh, I can, uh, I'll take my hanky with me. <laughs> oh, you're sitting, sitting with Freddie. Congrats. Oh, I 